it about Trayvon that made him so special? We've seen young black men gunned down in similar circumstances. What is it about Trayvon that made him stand out and to bring about all these tributes? It's, I think it was the innocence yeah. of, his, of the all, that he had the innocence in his yeah. pocket. And I think this, the candy is so significant because candy, think of children. And he's not an adult, he's still a teen, he's an age 17. So he was in the gated community and it brought back to be in the year 2012. And then you have to go back to the MLK speech. Right. You know, still being judged by the color of your skin. So I think it was Trayvon's innocence that really, and then the fact that Zimmerman was not punished is what, and, it, and, and you know, got into people period. So I think his innocence plus that no justice was done for the family is what got people to how do you feel about the stand your ground law that exists in 22 states in our union? <laughs> well, this can be to so, everyone. How do you all feel about the stand your ground law that exists within 22 states within our union? Which pretty much is giving some people a little shelter for Zimmerman and what he did to Trayvon Martin. I think that's what we have to get. That's beyond making sure that Zimmerman is prosecuted. That's the next step here. Is making sure that that's a Law. It allows people allowed. to take action and basically with the shoot first, ask questions later type of thing. So it allows people to flex that right and no, you know, no justice will come after that. So I don't know if you guys want to answer that question. But. In 2008, we elected this nation's first black president. Do you feel that President Barack Obama could have done more in a proactive nature prior to this happening no. to prevent this no, from happening? No, he needed to be quiet. He needed to be quiet. Needed, um, Not after. I'm talking before. Before, he needed to be quiet. Okay. We don't want him to jeopardize the case against him. So, um, you mean before... Yeah, yeah I'm oh. talking about... Oh, nine and 10 coming. and 11, is there anything him and Eric Holder could have done to prevent this from no, happening? This is us, the people. Like, this is, this is us. We, we have to be responsible for our own actions. Um, just as much as we're urging Zimmerman and um, Sanford Police Department to be responsible for their actions, we here, everyone has to be responsible for our actions as a community. Yeah. Do any of you have children? No. no. Okay. No. If you had a son who was Trayvon's age, what would you tell him in light of this incident, and how would you advise him on dealing with the situation that Trayvon was facing from the back of the guy? To be quite honest, you know, let him see that this is an example that racism is alive and well. You know, can't lie to your children and say that what took place with Trayvon can't happen because we are not So you let him see that as an example to know that you have these spirited people who will follow you and let you down and shoot you. And that can happen. And I was stressed. And to piggyback off that idea, like I was stressed to my child. There's nothing that they need to change. We don't need to change. I'm not gonna tell my child to not wear a particular hoodie or a brand or pull up his pants. Like we can't just make a snap judgment based off someone's appearance. So I was just continuing to, to encourage him to get his education, um, to be proud, to not be discouraged by the situation. Um, but I definitely would not echo some sentiments that I'm hearing about um, what we need to do. This is about what they should have done, what they need. To do. Okay, I don't want to keep up too much more of your time. This has been a great rally. I see right. a lot of people out here yes. wearing their hoodies in tribute to Trayvon Martin. Let me ask you this question. Do any of these people in these hoodies look suspicious to you? <laughs> no, <laughs> not, not even me. Okay, no. all right. That's fantastic. Thank you, Thank so, you so very so much. I, I got, so I got an answer for you. So you, you, you are the organizers of this event? So you're all the organizers of this event? Yes. Okay. 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 Okay, okay. So we get somebody to hold the umbrella because I'm not going to be able to You should be able to hold it. So, we might need somebody a little tall. <laughs> okay. No, 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 because, uh, you know, it's going to be there. We go. Okay. Hey, man. Okay. Let me do this interview and then maybe we can interview afterwards. Okay. Thank you.
Thanks, because we do need a multi-generational thing. All right, wait. Come on, come on, come on. We need our live stream right here. That's perfect. That's good. Okay. Douglas Sloan with AcrossTheTheater.com. I am standing here with Minister E. Gail Anderson Holness. How are you today? All is well. All right. All is well, but there's a lot that needs to be done. Okay. Tell me how you felt when you first learned about Trayvon Martin's killing. I felt betrayed by the system. I felt as though if I had had a son, looking at my daughter, Allie, he would have looked just like or very similar to Trayvon. Trayvon, and, and I'm just a myth at, at the judicial system in America. One of my first cases out of law school was working on the Wayne Williams trial, the young man that was accused of killing the kids some 30 years ago. And black, young black boys have been an endangered species for a very long time. It just didn't happen with Trayvon down in Florida. This has been happening forever. I've been the one that's been hollering and screaming. I've been that lone voice in the wilderness crying out that these drive-by shootings are not by African Americans against African Americans. Because if it were us doing the drive-by shootings, they would have found us immediately. This is an injustice that cannot go under. And here we are standing in the backdrop of the district building in the nation's capital, and we've come to tell America and the world, we're not going to take it anymore. No justice, no peace, and we need to be real clear that we're not going to stop until something happens, and we're going to even push even harder. And as a minister, as a, as a pastor of an AME church here in Washington, D.C., and president of the Interfaith Conference of Metropolitan Washington that encompasses all religions, we're going to say enough is enough, and we're going to fast, and we're going to pray, because if we push, pray until something happens, Something will happen. And we have read, as a theologian, I know that some things come by prayer and fasting. And there are those of us who are going to turn our plates over, betray our, we're not going to just put our head, hoods on our heads. We're going to do something okay. because something has to be done. And we are sick and tired of being sick and tired. Okay, now you mentioned that you are a minister. You also are a lawyer. I'm right? a lawyer. Okay. How do you feel about this stand your ground law that exists in 22 states in our union? Well, if we had known that the stand and our ground law existed, it'd be a lot of people on the ground right about now. And, and the stand your ground law is a law that should be thrown out. That is, that's why we have policemen. This is not, you become a policeman because I mean, this guy Zimmerman obviously was one of those guys that wanted to be a policeman and was rejected. And so he has taken things on his, into his own hands. And that's what that stand our, your ground law does. It allows individuals who have no training in legal anything to just take the law into their own hands. It needs to be repealed. It needs to be thrown out. And whatever states have it, need to throw, it makes them a vigilante. Okay. And that's an awful thing to be in 2012. We thought racism was dead. Racism continues to raise its ugly head in America. And, and even though we have a president that is an African-American, if President Obama had a pack of Skittles and was walking down the street to take Sasha and Malia some Skittles back home and put his hoodie on, he'd be dead right about now. And so we need to be real clear where we are, even in the backdrop of the district building in the nation's capital. We are not going to take it anymore.